like to go live. So we are live with another edition of the worst creepypasta search on the bad creepypastas wiki. And we're just going to jump right into it. We're starting off with Elmo Jack in the Box. If you've read my pasta, Turn Away, you will know that scary things happened to me as a child. Here's another story about those times. This particular event that happened in the same room and same house that Turn Away did. When I was a very small kid, and I mean very small as in I was still in a crib but in my own room, I had an Elmo Jack in the box. It was my favorite toy. I never knew when it was going to pop up, so it gave me quite the thrill. I was never even scared of it, but I was rather entranced. Judging from what my parents say, I would only play with this Elmo toy from the day it was bought to the day it was thrown out. My parents say that they kind of, they knew this kind of behavior was not normal after many months of me playing solely with this toy, but chose to ignore it because I seemed perfectly normal in every other way. That is, until one night. It was a night normal as any other. I'd been playing with the Elmo toy with my father, then it was bedtime. My dad put the jack-in-the-box back in the toy bin, with toys that hadn't been used for quite some time, laid me down to bed, and walked out of the room, turning off the lights just before he softly closed the door. Hours and hours went by. Everything was okay, so my parents walked down the hall and get to their bedroom. As they, close, as they got closer to my door, they noticed that the light was on. Upon getting closer, they could hear the Elmo toy making up wind wind-up wind noises. They shrugged it off and figured that I had woken up and was playing with it. They said that they went into their room still to change into their sleeping attire and argue who would have to put me to bed again. When they opened the door, they heard the Elmo jack-in-the-box spring up and make one of its various noises it would say when it popped up. That's when my mother realized I was still in the crib. How could I have made it out to play with the Elmo toy or turn on the lights. She opened the door and was truly frightened by what she saw. Sitting in the dead center of the room was the Elmo toy, looking directly at the door, and now my mom. Not saying or doing anything, just sitting there, staring. I was fast asleep still in my crib. The toy chest was locked and closed. They put it in the trash right then and there, and it was picked up the next day to be forever forgotten. Now, you may be thinking, this can't be real, this is obvious fake. In which case, you would be wrong. My parents have told me this story countless times, the details of it never changing, as lies often do. I also vividly remember having that Elmo toy one day and not having it the next. I didn't know why it was gone, but I continued to play with my other toys as if nothing happened. If you read any of my other pastas, you will know that I do try and add as much realism to them as possible. This, my friends, is entirely 100% true. Wait, why would you need to add realism if it's a real story? What are you fucking talking about, bro? Below, I have some shocking evidence of some other strange things that the Elmo toys have done. Wait, what the fuck? You can choose to believe it or not, but I have all the proof and experience I need. This did happen. The video proof used to link in this page has been unfortunately deleted. Yo, Grayson Reynolds, what the fuck? Thank you for the $50. Holy shit, dude. That's crazy. You're mad generous. Thank you so much, Grayson. My lord. And thank you, Ari, for another month of membership. I'm eating Takis and practically drowning in water. That makes me so happy. I'm going to sip some water. Thank you so much, Grayson, by the way. I hope you're staying super freaking hydrated. All right, so that was not a good story at all. Uh, Taki slap, by the way. And hello, everybody. I like to start off the stream by getting into a story right away so people watching the replay can kind of hop right into the content. But hope everybody's having a good night. Hannah, I hope you're having a great night. My old account was simply Miko. I do remember you. You were always up in here. You lost your account? That's freaking terrible. I'm sorry to hear that. But thank you for your continued support, and uh, it's nice to see you again. I just spit on my screen. All right, um, let's get into these emails from Jenny. That was fucking horrible. Like, that was really bad. I know that maybe it was, like, trying to be simplistic and, like, not too crazy 
to allow some realism, but you kind of gotta have some things happen to, like, make it scary, and, uh, yeah, there just wasn't enough here to detach me from the fact that this is simply an Elmo toy. Bro, okay, I'm actually gonna make a, a real video out of reading the Jeff the Killer story. I've had that on my video ideas list for so long, and I can't believe I haven't done it yet. Andy May, what's good? Alright, let's get into emails from Jenny. These were the emails from my friend Jenny before she disappeared. Email 1. Dear Mia, school at Cali's been going good. I miss talking to you on the phone. However, someone's been stalking me, though. You want to know how I know? Whenever I come home from late night studying with a friend, we see a shadowy figure in the corner of our eyes. It's scary because it might be anybody. Even... never mind. Just watch out at night and email me back when you can. I'm so confused already. So she's in school in Cali, which I guess is a different state than Mia lives in. But she's also telling Mia to watch out for the stalker who lives in California. But whatever, we'll continue. Email number two. Dear Mia, why haven't you called today? You said you don't have any tutoring for the rest of the week, so why? Anyways, I'm in deep shit. That figure gets closer to me every night. So far, it's three inches closer than before. How would you even be able to tell the difference if this is a faraway figure? This person's like, has the best eyesight and distance perception of all time. You could tell when he's three fucking inches closer. It looks like a man holding a gun with an inhuman face. Anyway, see ya. Email number three. Please don't leave without calling me. He's gotten closer. His face isn't human. He has a black suit, long, stretchy arms, a white face, and no facial features whatsoever. Anyways, I need your help. How do I defend against it? Email number four. Oh, dear God, he's here. Apparently, he's Slenderman. If you see him, don't think of him. You can run, but you cannot hide. Help. That was the last I've heard of Jennifer. The police cannot find any traces of her. What the fuck? Somebody in the chat was like, oh, like, Mia's gonna be the stalker. And that's what I thought, too. And I would have, even though that would have been the obvious twist, I prefer that to it just being Slender Man. Like, the, the scary part of your story can't be just the fact that it's Slender Man. Also, didn't it look like he was holding a gun earlier? Fucking Slenderman with the gat, dude. Alright, emails from Jenny. That was pretty bad. I like it. Okay, emergency alert system. When I was about 12, I had an odd fear of emergency broadcast systems. Systems. I never really got the point of this, but one night it was about to get worse. Around 1am, I saw an alert for a storm coming around 2 I was home alone, nobody else was around, and all of the lights were out except for the light of the TV. As I felt very uncomfortable, I heard the announcer's voice say, If you are outside, get to a shelter fast. After that, the silent alert just stayed on the TV for an awkward 30 seconds, and then it started glitching up. The screen started showing pixels scramble all over television, and then I saw some disturbing images and videos. The alert had interrupted a show that I just started, so I assumed it was just the signals mixing. What I heard were a bunch of scattered beeps, static, rings, all sorts of sounds mixed together. I saw anonymous faces of many expressions. One was happy, one was sad, one was shocked, one was terrified, and another was mad. Af As this was happening, the lights in the house went insane. They kept turning on and off, and I even recall one of the lights blowing a fuse. All that was in my head in that moment was nothing more than, what the fuck? Then the screen went black and restarted the warning, but nothing wrong happened this time. It ended normally with two long beeps and three short beeps. Twenty minutes later, it issued another warning, but at the end it said something out of the blue. If you are outside, get to shelter fast, and get down to the lowest part of the building. But there is no hope for you. You're next. Then, after three short beeps, the power went out. I got up off the couch and ran to the basement. When I got to the stairs, I saw two gleaming eyes at the bottom glaring at me. I then froze in fear as I felt something cold touch my shoulder. Okay, that actually wasn't that bad! 
That, that like, it, it could have been really bad. I thought we were going to get three in a row where it was just, like, lights flickering was the big scare of this. But, um... I almost wish that it didn't say you're next. I feel like that line kind of made it slightly less scary. I like that there's no hope for you, and I like seeing the gleaming eyes at the bottom of the staircase is very ominous, and then feeling something touch your shoulders like, yeah, you're fucked, you're dead. Uh, but emergency alert system, okay, comparatively to freaking Elmo Jack in the Box and letters from Jenny. Um, let's check out free games. Let's see if this is, is this super long? Oh my god, it's ultra long. I don't know how people even write these long creepypastas. Found footage. <laughs> Apparently this was in a 10 awful animal, animal jam creepypasta. So any Animal Jam fans out there, hopefully you like this one. I was so happy when I noticed that the Zeo's portal has opened and revealed the articles that were lost for 10,000 years. I stretched my paws crawling down the stairs. Oh no. Okay, so we've got some sort of like dog person or furry or something like that it smelled very unpleasant like blood i sniffled and walked around i was curious and excited to see all of it in one piece then something caught my eye i raised my ears and walked into it a cassette player along with a basket of tapes i made the bad choice of taking them i ran to my den eager to play them I put the tape labeled number one into the cassette player. I jamagrammed my buddy to come over. Is that an animal jam? I, I'm guessing it's an animal jam thing if it's jamagrammed. That's actually kind of fire. I like it. We were both excited to see them. An arctic wolf adjusted the camera, which soon panned to the door with the word Mira carved into it. Howls of pain came from the area of the den, and soon blood ran under the door. My friend and I became scared. Then it just cut to an audio recording. A fox talked, but I did not understand it. Then there were two animals, an arctic wolf and a fox. Confusingly, they just talked in static. Then a bunny spoke with her innocent voice echoing everywhere. Suddenly, paws shot out of the walls. Adrenaline filled my head and braced me to run. My friend picked up the tapes and threw them in the trash. Her eyes were filled with horror as she shoved the trash can at me. Burn them, she yowled. In shock, I asked why. The wolf was talking to the fox. The wolf that was talking to the fox is Stardust321. Haven't you heard of him? I shook my head, but then flashed back in a gaze that I hinted, flashed back in a gaze that hinted I wanted to know. He's a creepypasta. He's a horror character, my friend yelped. Her pupils dilated with fear. A shiver ran down my spine. I, I can't, I can't take the furry horror seriously because I'm just pic picturing people in fur suits or like anthropomorphic animals. It just doesn't. It becomes unscary. Like when I'm picturing like hands materializing out of a wall, that's freaky. But when I'm picturing it being like the hand of a fucking creepy pasta, I don't, I don't even know. I honestly do not know. It just, not a creepypasta, of a furry. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know, you guys. I'm gonna jam a gram all of you guys later tonight, though. So keep an eye on your inbox. I'm picturing little teddy bears. Exactly, teddy bears. Alright, here we go. Found.rar. Maybe this will be a furry thing as well. Rar! Alright, in mid to late to one... Those are not words, bro. In mid to late 2010, what was I even trying to say? In mid to late 2010, there was a file being passed around via chain letter by the f name of FoundRAR, which by the title you can probably guess was a WinRAR file. Fuck. Sorry, I need to plug in my headphones. I should have charged them before the stream, but I'm silly. Alright, so there was a WinRAR file. Which, by the title, you can probably guess was a WinRAR file that could only be opened with said program. In order to view said file, you had to first extract the data out of the file. Once you did that, it would show three more files. Map.png, Camera.exe, and Hello.txt. Oh wait, is there like a mods issue? We're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. 
So we got map png camera.exe and hello txt. The first of which would be an image file of the user's residence via satellite image, which to this day has baffled the experts because they've been unable to find out how the image was acquired and by who. Camera.exe, once opened, would connect to the user's webcam and begin recording them. It is said that the viewer will see a person standing in the background of the room they are in if they look hard enough. But this has been dismissed as simply an urban legend. And finally, Hello TXT was a text file that contained the following message. Hello, whoever sent this to you is already gone because I've found them. And if you've already opened the other two files, then your time has come. I can already see you, and I am approaching you at high speeds as you read this. Don't even think about calling the police, because I've already severed your phone line. I've already programmed this file to send itself to all of your mail recipients. So I guess I could... So I guess you could say thanks. All I have to say is, God have mercy on your soul. The victims were found as the same room as their computers, headless, and the computer blue screening. In all the cases, the heads were never located, and the flesh around the neck was completely untouched, as if there was never any trauma to that area at all. Like if they simply lacked a head in the first place. The computers were all extremely damaged, but in one case, one of the computers was able to be savaged. Turns out the BIOS was so badly damaged that it completely prevented the computer from turning on. But in this case, the people working on it were able to repair the BIOS just enough to get the computer to the boot screen. All that it showed was a severed head, with no signs of trauma below the neck. As if the head was never even removed in the first place. I actually kind of like this one. for if, if for no other reason, then I do think the image in your head of a headless person but there's like actually skin covering the part and it just looks like a person that was born without a head um that's kind of creepy but other than that it's kind of generic just like hey, chain mail i got this thing and then there's a guy and he kills you and the headless and all that sort of stuff but a decent some originality in there definitely you get a couple points all i can imagine is someone running comically fast I know, fast running does not, like, you have to, I feel like you have to animate fast running in a certain way to get it to look creepy and not just really silly. Hell yeah, late night stream for me in Germany, let's go. Yo, Jacques, thank you so much for the five uh, euros. My hair looks fucking terrible, dude. I kind of needed those headphones to, like, cover up the bad hair day I'm having right now. But, uh, <laughs> thank you so much, and yeah, it's late as fuck. Well, it's not super late, it's probably like 12.41. What's up, Wesley? What's Madam X? I'm just going to open up a bunch of new creepy pastas because I opened up like six to start the video, but we kind of go through them pretty quick. The first Krabby Patty. Never forget when you almost pissed yourself during the scariest videos on YouTube whenever there was fast running, especially on stairs. Yes, dude. Yeah, if it's done right, it's fucking terrifying, especially if like, if, if, like, when somebody uses their limbs to... I'm doing a terrible job of it now, but I've gone to, like, a haunted house where, like, people jump out and scare you and stuff. And, like, when they use their limbs a lot in the run towards you, it's very scary. Um, my life is a creepypasta. Mario Kart Black. Mario Mafia. There's a lot of Mario ones. Alright, let's see what's up with Madam X. My little pony, my so soft pony. Alright, I never told anyone. No one would understand. Then I found this site in English with a CH, not my language. So I hope you can read between the lines and share my fear. How can I explain in a language that has not been learned to my, to my by birth? I have to use other words for something I cannot even write or tell in my own language. Still I will try. Please try to read my story. Perhaps you can help me, perhaps not. Just try and understand. I'm working with the elderly in a nursing home. I'm working there as a male worker, most are female. 
I think that is the case in most nursing homes with the elderly. So what I do is taking care of 20 elderly people, patients, and wash them, help them, and take care of their every need. They lived in a closed environment because they have Alzheimer's disease or other mental diseases inflicting their memories and state of mind. The patients I work with are old, very old. Their minds and understanding of what goes on around them are totally gone in most cases. They are locked up, so I guess it's a nursing home slash prison? 20 people on two levels, 10 people a level. They can't get out, there are closed doors with a code slot. You have to be able to know the code to get out. Most of the patients I care for want to get out, want to go on the outside looking for relatives or family members who died years ago and just don't visit anymore, or just don't visit anymore. A lot of my patients don't see any family or friends. Most give up or cannot deal with this disease. Alzheimer's is the most common. I think it's sad. Yeah, I agree. When does this get scary? Right now I just feel bad. I can see the daily suffering of loneliness. Most of my patients never accepted their disease. They die fighting. Fighting what they have lost in their minds and never accepting. But not everyone. Some have come to accept their fate and try to make the best of it, even if their minds are failing them. They work on the things they still can and not dwell on the things that they cannot do anymore. Anyhow, that was Madam X. We're three quarters into the story and we're finally getting the title character introduced to us. A patient who tried to enjoy the last years of her life, instead of complaining or giving up. But even Madam X came to her end and changed my life forever. -er. She was dying in my night shift, so I was there the night it happened. We are getting to the conflict three seconds, three sentences away from the end. Curse my bad English. How can I explain the loss of sleep, the terror of that night? I cannot do this today. Not now, because tomorrow I have another night shift. I fear. I fear for my life. But I cannot abandon my patience. It is my calling to help the sick and make them feel better. Who wants to die? What is this? Okay, wait. This person has a user profile. But they don't have any actual extra wanky entries. So this person's entire story is basically, like, predicated on the cop-out that... Oh, I don't speak... English isn't my first language, so I can't actually explain at all what happened in this situation. Just know that there was a patient named Madam X, and she wanted to live to the best of her abilities in the last years of her life... But scary things happened that night. Okay, yeah, that was fucking awful. Holy balls. That was not good at all, bro. That's tough. Oh, this one's hella long. Oh, I want to try Krabby Patty so bad, dude. Oh. Okay, here we go. My first Krabby Patty. Today I had my first Krabby Patty. And let me just say for the record, it was the best thing I've ever tasted. That fry cook sure does know how to make a good burger. What makes these patties taste so good, I'm not sure. Needless to say, I could go for another one. No, should I really? I mean, look at the prices at this fast food eatery. They are ridiculously high. You could buy a VCR cheaper than these patties here in this town. I mean, come on. I don't even know what the price of a VCR is anymore, but... I mean, I love living here in Bikini Bottom. But sometimes the citizens here can really irritate me. I don't mean to offend anyone, but I really think the city could use some changes. Of course, it'll never change. No matter how much I try to get the residents here in Bikini Bottom to change their lifestyle, they seem to reset it back to their average one at the end of every day. I can never win. Seems kind of funny, does it? Not really. This note was written by Leonard DeFicke, who accidentally killed his wife by crashing through a wall of his house while drunk driving. His wife had a concussion and was sent to the hospital. After a few days, she stopped ble breathing and her life ended. Leonard grew into a deep depression after that incident. Then one day, he found the children's show SpongeBob SquarePants. After watching an episode, he drugged himself and then started living his life as if he was on the show. He became insane and believed he was actually living in the series. He was happy, though. Living a brand new life free of depression. 
Leonard is dead now. He died a little after writing this note. A little after eating his first Krabby Patty. There's way too many fucking layers to this. Oh my god. This is actually, like, kind of genius and, like, original in a weird way. Uh, yo, later, Luna. Thanks for coming out. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this guy thinks he's a resident of Bikini Bottom. Did, it, did the Krabby Patty kill him? What's up, Maury? Those gummy Krabby Patties were gourmet as a kid. Yeah, I actually kind of liked those. But I also weirdly wanted them to taste like an actual Krabby Patty and not like a gummy snack. I don't know, I'm just a weird kid. But we've had some weird stories so far. Like, this one just takes such a left turn when it freaking introduces Leonard de Ficky. What an interesting individual. Alright, what's this my friend's nightmare? Dear Dad, I had a nightmare. It started out with a guy trying to do a Minecraft trick video, and he suddenly says, Here's a scary pop-up from my friend. And it shows a really creepy picture of a brown-haired woman with a gaping mouth and black eyes. She wore a light blue need shirt. She's standing in the middle of a room with the background light on. The nightmare ends. I drink a sip of my water. After I woke up, I was horrified when I saw a shadow pass by. At this time, I was scared shitless. I even know what happens next in the dream. It was the scream. Even though it was in the dream, it felt like reality. Like, I'm in the dream, but I'm not dreaming at the same time. It felt weird. I had this nightmare before when I was younger. I was either 10, 9, or 5. But, yes I know, scary, right? But I realized in the picture that I just had in the dream, it was a candle that lit up that place. It was placed on a table. Nearly all the room was lit, except for the left and right corners of the room. It was completely dark. The floor was wooden, like my room. I didn't even know what my dream was telling me. Was it telling me that there's a demon on the loose in my house? Or an alien type thing? We must figure this out. But how? The woman's mouth was black, and it was bleeding black blood. And her eyes are black, and her skin is dark gray. Hey, that kind of reminds me of evil Matt that I created on YouTube. Bro, nobody knows about your random OC that you created on YouTube. I even made a video of my, me singing Inside the Fire by Disturbed that I lowered my voice pitch on Sony Vegas. But that doesn't give a clue of why I had the nightmare. I guess not. I'm a little paranoid, but I will get over it. Sincerely, Matthew. I'm fucking so... This story's called My Friend's Nightmare, but it's written in the first-person perspective of this guy sending a letter to his dad. It started out with a guy trying to do a Minecraft trick video, and then he said, here's a scary pop-up for my friend, and it shows a really creepy brown-haired woman with a gaping mouth and black eyes. I was either 10, 9, or 5. How do you not know the difference between those ages? This person's just lost. And then they're trying to plug their freaking YouTube video. This kind of reminds me of the evil Matt that I created on YouTube. Jeez. Does anybody make... Yeah. That could have been 5 to 10. That's a pretty large gap. I'm either one age or double that age. This creepypasta is just a thinly veiled promotion of the author's favorite media on YouTube. Exactly. I feel like that's a lot of these. Okay, well here we go. My life is a creepypasta. I have been haunted. Whenever I read a pasta, it comes true. The Slender Man. Real. Jeff. Real. The Rake. He's real too. My very own creepypasta is real, too. They haunt me. My explanation is that I am different than you, and I am a being of a higher level. My friend, who shall remain unnamed for safety reasons, sees things like this, too. Near Regan Park in Texas, she saw something try and claw, claw its way out of the old elevator, and afterwards, she heard an evil laughter and saw claw marks on the floor. 
We, me and my friend, are higher beings. We are dangerous. Our minds create things that we imagine. It just sounds like the first draft of something like you're in science class and you're like, let me think of a creepypasta. And so you write out like a little plot synopsis or maybe like the introduction or what the premise is going to be. But this is not a final story. Like, oh, well, creepypastas are real because me and my friend are higher beings. Like, I don't know. <laughs> sounds like a fantasy that you would have with your friends and you would like, like you get bullied at school, which fuck bullies, I hate bullies, but... And then you cope with it by making creepypasta characters real or something like that. Oh, this is way too long. Mario Mafia. I don't know if I want that. Let's try, let's try Nuke. Are they doing the N-A-Z-I word? Alright, who cares? Ah, no, I don't want to do it. Fuck, I hate YouTube. Okay, the, those are all of them. Okay, one. We'll, we'll find some new ones. This kind of person would call other people NPCs? Absolutely. Just open up a bunch of new stories. Can you guys still hear the creepy music going in the background? Nightmare Ned. Nightmare Witch. Nina the Killer. No rest for the unliving. No such luck. Nintendog's death. Okay, that sounds intense. The music is actually a little loud. Thank you, Ari. You're an absolute freaking champion, dude. Hopefully that's a better volume. Obsessed. Obsessive. Obsidian. Octillery. Odd occurrences. So There are mad freaking Pokemon ones. Oh no, Nina the Killer's like a freaking novel! Holy shit, this person needed to make four separate videos to cover it. I'm sorry, guys. No Nina the Killer for now. No rest for the unliving. Let's try this bad boy. I'm just gonna sip some more water. You guys better fucking stay hydrated or I'm gonna freaking make Slenderman real. And he's gonna come hold a gun outside your house. No rest for the unliving. Manfred wasn't a very smart man. He took everything at face value, never really seeing through tall tales or secrets not mentioned. And so, he bought a cheap house in a marshland. That's what you do when you're not smart. You buy a house in marshland. I don't know. A standard two-story house made in the 1970s, and he loved it very much. It was his pride and joy. He lived alone in this house, and despite his love for it, the smell was disgusting and there were bug infestations quite frequently. One night, he investigates to find the source, when he overturned a floorboard and found the secret. A food cache was rotting underneath his floor, left by the previous owners. Despite his attempts to contact those who sold him the house, they were unreachable. He began throwing out the rotting food when he stumbled across the true secret of this house. Grave rotting bodies lay underneath the food piles. Naturally, a horrifying sight. But man, Manfred, yeah, he's, he was conflicted. If he called the police, he would seem suspicious for having bodies in his home. Bro, Manfred, you're so dumb. They would be able to age the bodies and know that they were there before you moved in. But maybe there's a secret person that's hiding the bodies in there after he moved in. So that it would seem like. So maybe he's not that stupid. Uh, if he didn't, he would be arrested. Oh, if he didn't call the cops, he wouldn't be arrested, but he would have to live with the trauma. So there he lie, in his bed at night, but he was without sleep, only laying with dread. Morning after morning, day after day, his eyes became more wide and red. His appearance became sickly and unkept, but his mind was decaying fast. Then he heard it. Heartbeats. Multiple heartbeats from different sources. Soon he began hearing creaking, it getting closer and closer. He grabbed a, a gun to defend himself, and yet, how could he against a foe he could not understand? His aim weakened, his arms quaked, and his door swung open. The bodies moved slow, yet with perfect tracking. Pieces of their skin flaked off, revealing bone and rotted tissue. Manfred was overwhelmed and dropped his weapon, accepting his fate. 
Manfred was found dead the next morning, and there were bodies in his house. His body was found in his room, blood soaked on the floor, and he was very dead. A gunshot wound to the head. Yeah, you just kind of fucked up, Manfred. I, I, it's just, I, yeah, I really don't, I, I, yeah, I just don't, I don't get why he would made this decision. It's just like, call the police, you know, I know uh, the police investigations are definitely not perfect, but uh, I would hope they would be able to age those bodies and find out that they were there before you moved in. But, uh, and, and even then, it's just like, how are you going to live with these corpses in your home, making the house smell like dead bodies all the time? It's just, it's a no-win scenario, like they explained. Two out of ten. Oh, no, long story alert. Okay, this one's, it looks long, but it's not that long. Nintendog's death. After reading my friend's experience, and also many creepypastas like Nintendog's noodles... It really reminded me of a bad experience I had with Nintendogs. I never really told another living soul about this until now. Last summer I was really bored. I went on the computer, still bored. I ate snacks and watched TV, and I was still bored. Until one hot, sweaty Tuesday in mid-August, I decided to play my old DS games on my 3DS. I fished I fished through, I fished, they did not fist through, they fished through a large plastic box, it says little plastic box, I'm fucking everything up, little plastic box I had in my room, until I found the first game I ever got, Nintendogs Doctioned and Friends. I ran, ran downstairs to the den to play the game. I turned on the 3DS, pressed the DS icon, and started up the game. The Nintendo Lugo... Why? I can't speak. The Nintendo logo boot up was different. Instead of happy various barking, there was whimpering. The happy-go-lucky music on the dog screen after the boot up was replaced with a minor key. When I looked up for my golden retriever, Lucky, she was not around. I tried to call her name and tap the screen when she finally showed up on the screen. She had a present in her mouth. I opened the present and it said, you got special note. When it said this though, my dog whimpered instead of happily barking. After that, it said, it is suggested that you see this right away. Type care. I checked the note. It said, dear owner, this is not a joke. We will have to put your dog down due to knee. This is not a joke. We will have to put your dog down due to years of neglection and abuse. Come to the kennel right away. From the kennel. I did just as it informed me to. I watched what they did. A hand showed up with a syringe. I cried as they put in the injection, which put down Lucky. The person I referenced before was my friend who had a similar experience in 2009 with a Caillou episode where Gilbert was put down. He told me in person once, but never described. Why are you bringing in your friend's experience with Caillou where Gilbert was put down? Is that a real thing? Does anybody know this episode of Caillou? When they were done, I heard soft crying like if it was at a funeral. It wasn't over yet. It faded to my dead virtual dog in a box. I realized this was a cremation. I pet Luggy as if it gave me the chance to. Two hands picked up Lucky and placed her in a blanket. She and the blanket were placed in some sort of oven. The hand closed the oven and faded, hand opening the oven, revealing a pile of pure gray ashes. The ashes were then put in a cremation jar, or whatever it's called. It faded to black as the cremation jar was on a shelf. Video game credits, like in Pokemon, rolled across the screen. Sad music played as the credits rolled. When the credits finished, it asked me if I wanted to turn off the system or not. I was still in despair about the loss of my first Nintendog I ever owned, so I chose yes. I didn't want to play this game in a long time. I didn't destroy the game, but I kept it in a Nintendo DS bag I have. So if I ever wanted to play the game again, which won't happen in a long time, I could find it and see if I'll ever see Lucky again or not. What I hope for is that everything goes back to normal. This is fucked up, dude. <laughs> like, I, I kind of like the concept, actually. Like, it's... The execution isn't great, but the idea of, like, you know, Nintendo trying to encourage you to play the game as often as possible by having this, like, horribly traumatic consequence for if you don't take care of your virtual dog where it, like, has to get put down or, like, something bad happens to it. 
I think that's kind of dystopian and cool. I'm not sure if that's exactly what they meant to do by this, but uh, I do like the concept here. Nintendog's death. That's funny. Uh, maybe we'll do that one later. Oh, these stories are kind of long. I'm already so bad at reading right now. Okay, Obsessive's a little bit shorter. I'm going to sip some sips. Yeah, I feel like a lot of these stories, they try and, like, tug on your heartstrings instead of just being scary. And I really... You're not... I don't... And they're, okay, there are definitely, like... What are they called? Like, uh... Prodigal... Prodigal? I don't know. Really good young people at writing. But if you're, like, 14 years old, you're probably not going to be able to effectively, like, tug on people's heartstrings. So you should probably just try and keep it to the scary stuff obsessive oh we, we're gonna have a psychological thing here so prepare for everything you read in this to be incorrect about psychological disorders all right obsessive have you ever wondered what the hell makes those obsessive compulsive people do what they do i have and that's led me to the findings of a certain psychologist and his test subjects as it turns out, most of the time when a person suffering OC disorder performs a ritual or action caused by his disorder, the person's brain fires out a mixed signals. The patient sweats uncontrollably, especially if he or she is trying to resist the urge to do whatever they have to do. And more importantly, their eyes. When a person who has OCD does something because of the disorder, like, say, tapping their hand on the nearest wall because he burped, or uh, he goes through a phase of REM, or rapid eye movement, associated chiefly with reoccurring nightmares. REM is not associated chiefly with reoccurring nightmares. It's associated chiefly with fucking dreaming. You're so dumb. All right, what does this mean, though? Well, for our doctors, it meant that 8 out of 10 of his su test subjects have their own invisible monsters. The causes of his lab rats vary... And there's 82, there's an 82-year-old World War II veteran, a boy who just turned 16. Why are you calling them his lab rats? They're test subjects, bro. Anyway, a 28-year-old woman. So we got a World War II veteran that's 82, a boy who's just 16, and a 28-year-old woman. Just different types of people who shared something in common. They were all obsessed with keeping up with their daily vi their daily vegetables, their daily rituals, whatever the cost, and the doctor believed he found out why. So they were focused on keeping their daily vegetables. Fuck, dude, I cannot speak! Guys, why does anybody watch me? I can't even read. All right. So they're obsessed with keeping up their daily rituals, whatever the cost, and the doctor believed he found out why. He believes that these people, at one point in their lives, saw or experienced something compelling them, commanding them to oblige or suffer. Naturally, they comply with the conditions, thinking that it would deter the threat, but it doesn't. It eats at them. The thing or place that scares them the most, and... It keeps commanding them to do something they don't really want to or understand. Each time they do it, it keeps the being satisfied for the moment, keeping them safe. This nightmare is what children refer to as the boogeyman, the thing in the closet, Slenderman, Stiltwalker, Smile Dog, Zalgo, mummies, ghosts, and all kinds of horrible things in the world. Really, all of us, in a way, suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder. Mwah, perfect psychological analysis, but just not as bad as these others. The monsters nod our subconscious, tearing us apart from within. This nightmare can strike at any time. He can be merciful or relentless, straightforward or black-handed. Backhanded? <laughs> it doesn't matter. If he hasn't already cut you, he will. Going senile? Yeah, that just sometimes when people grow old, they sometimes get the courage to confront the beast. And it almost never ends well. You can't tell us what it might make you do. You can't tell what it might make you do. Sometimes he makes you bang your head. If you're lucky. He might make you punch your desk. Oh, I do that when I'm playing CSGO. Scream until your throat hurts. I do that while I'm playing CSGO. Or even write random sec... <laughs> gibberish. The worst thing that you can do is forget all about him. Every single time. 
Well, almost every single more gibberish. So I guess this person is getting controlled by this guy who causes all mental illnesses. I don't know. Like, obviously, this it's a concept. You know, it's a concept of like some sort of being that controls people's mental states and causes them to hallucinate or feel driven to do a certain thing. But I honestly, like, not to get too in deep, I think it's way scarier that our brains just do that on our own and that there's not some evil creature doing it. Like, I think it's way scarier. There's just, like, a naturally occurring thing that happens. Um, so, yeah, this actually makes these disorders feel, like, less scary. I don't know. So the plot is OCD is evil and will cut you. Kind of. Did he get controlled, regain control, and didn't think, oh, I should fix this? Yeah, I do not know. I really do not know. Now, I guess, I think the ending is supposed to imply that he has now been fully controlled. Like, yeah, he started trying to finish the story. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Maybe this, the worst thing you can do is forget about all about him. Maybe that's actually the being speaking? I'm not sure. What's up, artistic Fruit Loops? Typical horror main character. <laughs> Alright, obsessive. That wasn't, I mean, it was pretty fucking bad. But it wasn't like, I don't know, it was bearable to read. Alright, we got somebody who separates everything into lines. Also, I just want to give a big thank you to Grayson again. Thank you so much, dude. Alright. Artillery. Is this like artillery, but with octopi? I don't know. Octillery. There was a boy who thought he had a deep friendship with his octillery. Wait, I need... I'm sorry. I need to know what an octillery... Does anybody know what an octillery is? Isn't octillery a Splatoon character? Okay, I might have to just utilize Google real quick. I just I gotta go into my other... Octiller... Nope. Octillery. As a Pokemon. Okay, I'm guessing that it's talking about the Pokemon. I guess so. I don't know, you guys. Let me see what you guys have to say again. Where'd the stream go? It's a Pokemon. Okay, cool, 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 cool. It's a silly octopus gun thing. Spiders are just tiny land occupy. Octopi. Me, a person with OCD reading this. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Octillery. There was a boy who thought he had a deep friendship with his Octillery. He thought that Octillery loved him as much as he loved her. They went everywhere together. He had ever since he was a child, he had raised her to be a strong fighter. He thought his Octillery was the strongest of them all. Maybe he was right. But one day, he had a fight with his best friend when they were out adventuring. He thought that him and his friend weren't going to be friends anymore. That made him angry. When he got home, he took out all his anger on Octillery. He yelled and yelled, and all his yelling confused Octillery. Octillery didn't understand why the boy was angry with her. She felt as if she was being attacked, so she defended herself. She lashed out at the boy. But that only made him angrier. He hit Octillery, and Octillery was very frightened of that, so she hit him back to defend herself. Excuse me, I burped. He hit Octillery, and Octillery was very frightened of that, so she hit him back to defend herself. The boy kicked Octillery, and Octillery was not only scared, but she felt betrayed. She climbed onto the boy and started pulling his arms with her suction tentacles. This horrified him, and he screamed as he tried to throw her off. But her grip was so tight that she only ended up tearing his arms off. The boy screeched as he felt the agony of his arms being ripped from his body and struggled to get away. But by that time he was weak and unable to escape Octillery's powerful grasp. The boy screamed and writhed, desperate to escape this nightmare, as Octillery reared her head back to give the final blow. Is this supposed to be like an allegory for like domestic violence and like retaliatory murder for domestic violence victims? Uh... Cause it kind of feels like that, but either way, I, I kind of got a side with Octillery here. Like, don't fuck around, or you're gonna find out, you know? Shotty got that Octillery. I was gonna say, in the middle of this story, I was like, there is somebody who is too into this story that is hearing it right now. Um, but yeah. Octillery. Odd occurrences. No, not, not the Octolossi. Anything but the Octolossi. Okay. 
Uh, odd occurrences. Somewhere in the dense villi forest... I'm fucking so dumb. Okay, here we go. Somewhere in the dense, hilly forests of Vermont is a small, slowly decaying shack. Depending on who you are and how you get there, something different will be inside. There are no power lines in this remote region. A lamp will be on and you will hear a faint humming. The voice will be that of an old woman, an adolescent boy, or a toddler. The accounts differ, but the song is always a psalm. Ring around the rosies. If you open the door, take note of the inside. There will be no light inside, and there may or may not be a decaying body on what was once a mattress. This you will find not only sickening, but odd, as if you close the door and look through the window, a lamp will be on, and the person will be, a person will be milling about inside. If you repeat this procedure, looking inside through the door, then the window six times, whilst also feeling no fear, you will be rewarded. Most can't do so, and are never heard from again. This is like a video game. This is like a, a Call of Duty Zombies Easter egg. Like, oh, you gotta go inside the door, and then look through the window, and you gotta do that six times in a row, and then you'll get the fucking upgraded ray gun. Uh, but most can't do this, so they just they'd never get it. Vermont Tussy, no! Back to normal voice, you got it, you got it. That was just a one, that was just, I was like, I was trying to put on my voice for a Vermont person, even though it's not what, I live near Vermont, and that's not what people sound like there at all. Um, alright, odd occurrences. Uh, player, this is kind of long, maybe we'll save it for later, let's put it towards the end. Okay, obsessed. Play with me! Add Ussy to everything. Gotta love the occasional mattress. I do like a good occasional mattress. Play with me. There, she's tapping at your window. Do you hear it? She wants to play with you, silly. She wants to play. That's all. Don't be afraid of the... It's all just fun and games. Do you hear it now? It's becoming a knocking sound. I think she really wants to play with you. She seems a tad impatient now. She's increasing the intensity. Why don't you go and play with her? Why? It's only fun and games and nothing but. She seems to be a tad impatient now. Fuck, I read the same thing. She's left the window. Now you can relax. She's just gonna return tomorrow night. Oh wait, do you hear the back door cracking open? Do you hear it? She's coming into your house just to play with you. Isn't that sweet? Footsteps. She's walking. She's walking towards your room. Do you want to play with her now? I would definitely play with her. Oh, do you see her lovely face? Do you feel the knife plunging into your stomach? Do you hear the cries of pain emitting from your mouth? Do you see her grin on her face, loving the sight of your pain? Why wouldn't you play with her? Why? Okay, wait. Avery Davis, thank you for the 9.99. Hey, Q, I just went to go check. Uh, now when I'm subscribed to you, and I saw that I've been subscribed for four years now. I was 16 then, and I'll be 20 tomorrow. Time's crazy. Keep up with the great vids. Yo, thank you so much for the continued support and the generosity with the 999 donation. Four years is a long-ass time. I've been doing YouTube for just over five years now, which is, like, really weird to think about. But, uh, yeah, so you've been there for, like, 80% of my career. No cue, I like the silly voices. I'll mix them in occasionally. I don't want to abuse the silly voices because you do them too much and they lose their their effect and their and their uniqueness. I, I, I don't I really don't like the whole like I actually think that the story is kind of effective. It did effectively create like a ramp up of intensity. But the whole, like, she wants to play thing, like, we've heard that a trillion times. And there's really, it doesn't matter if you play with her. Because guess what her version of playing is? It's going to be stabbing you in the face. Like, it's all it's all the same. In either way you take it. Uh, okay, this one's long as hell, man. People writing essays out here. Playground.avi. If it's got a file name in it, it's it's got to be good, right? Playground.avi. It was just a regular day in my town. I walked into the second-hand store and browsed the flash devices, flash drives. 
A particular one caught my eye. It was plain white with playground videos written on it in brown Sharpie. I'm just gonna take a sip. I'm just gonna take a little sip of water. Take some sip. Okay, so we got... Now let me just start the story up again. It was a regular day in my town. I walked to the second hand store and browsed the flash drives. A particular one caught my eye. It was plain white with playground videos written on it in brown sharpie. I took it to the checkout. I asked the woman monitoring the checkout how much it would cost. You don't want that USB, she warned me. I ignored her and told her to tell me how much it would cost in a stern tone. Um, you can have it for, she paused. I shook her. I shook her? Free, she said gleefully. Wait, why are you shaking this employee of a store? She passed me the receipt and I thanked her. I'm so confused. Okay, so this flash drive is for sale in the store. And then she tells him, you do not want that USB. And all of a sudden, he can have it for free. So this is, it's like back and forth. It's craziness. I walked down the street and arrived home. I turned on my PC and logged on. I placed the flash drive in the USB port of my computer. An autoplay window popped up and I selected view files in folder. What was there perplexed me. There was one file named playground.avi and no other files, apart from a web link to Google. I opened playground.avi and it showed a children's playground. It showed children playing and having fun. Woo! That continued for around an hour of footage. The file itself was two hours long. After the hour, it got dark. And parents arrived to take their children. Wait, so these parents were just leaving their fucking kids at the playground? Like, if you're a certain age, sure. But I'm picturing, like, little ass kids. Anyway, after that, no one was there for 30 minutes of footage. After that, a shadowy figure ran through the park. 30 seconds passed. The same figure ran again, this time closer to the camera. Again, a figure ran, this time after 10 seconds. The figure ran up to the camera, and then the footage cut to static. I waited, passing the time by making muffins. I came back with a blueberry-flavored muffin and sat down. It was on the last 10 minutes of video. After I waited for 5 minutes, it showed the figure in an interview room still shadowy. It was in the fetal position. Wait, what the fuck happened? Oh, they waited and passed the time by making muffins. Okay. Uh, so it showed the figure in an interview room, still shadowy, in the fetal position. The figure once again turned, the rest of the file being static and gargled portions of an image of the playground from the first scene of the file. The file ended. I closed down my computer. I am still looking into the mystery of playground.avi. I traveled to the store to ask who donated it. They said a figure wearing a robe which concealed its face donated the flash drive. The figure from the video. Every time I watch the video frame by frame, I get a blue screen when I would see the figure's face. This mystery is highly unlikely to ever be solved. Yeah, you didn't give us enough freaking information. What the heck is this? What's up, Aaron? I hope you're having a great evening. Uh... You know. For some reason, this part of the story where they say a figure wearing a robe which concealed his face donated the flashlight. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to, like, walk into a store with a hood. Uh, business owners don't tend to like that because you can cover up your face. And when you're covering up your face, you know, you could do bad things and get away with it. So if somebody's coming in with a full hood on a robe that is so large and concealing that you can't see their face at all, I'm pretty sure doctors will be accepting shit from them. Anyway, this is from Loveboy01. Okay, Nightmare Ned. Is Nightmare Ned a fucking movie? Anyway. One day I was bored and had nothing to do, so I turned on the TV and Nightmare Ned was on. It was dark and greenish looking. Poor quality, poor sound, and poor everything. It opened with Ned eating breakfast. He walked outside and was playing on his bike. I thought it was just some random commercial, but after I saw the intro, I realized it was an episode. Ned was playing with Conrad, and Vernon appeared. It was hard to understand what they said, because they sounded like they were babbling. They ran, apparently began to suck the brain out of a child, and he turned into a zombie. The children at his class thought it was a prank, but they were wrong. Ned assaulted the zombie in a very bad way, and the zombie... 
What the fuck? Why are we... Why are we assaulting zombie children? What the fuck? Creepypasta wiki. That person is so edgy. I hate it so much. Oh my god. Okay, anyway. Next fucking story. Jesus Christ. Ugh, what's good, Teresa? Does my hair look good? I don't fucking know. Been making a bunch of fucking TikToks on like my music TikTok, and so I'm 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 seeing my face a lot more, and it's it causes me to fucking analyze my looks way too much. I hate it. Nightmare Witch. I'm not lying. I really had this nightmare after I watched The Grudge with Joey. Joey and all other characters are real. I know no one of the last name Bella, nor with the first name Bella. Okay, good intro. Interesting. Uh, I'm 14. I live in Florida. I have been visited by the nightmare eye. Pretty normal day. A Friday. I went to the library with Joey. Hey, I'm Joey Wheelie! And after some convincing, I checked out The Grudge. We watched it. We went to sleep. Normal bunk bed. I was on the top bunk. We went to sleep. My dreams were pretty normal. Then it changed to a nightmare. I was back in my elementary school. I was cleaning stuff, then we went outside of the front door for a bit. I told a few kids out there to shut up, then we went back inside. It was raining, as usual. Suddenly, Emma appeared out... Okay, are you really fucking spelling Emma that way? That's so cringe. Uh, and suddenly, Emma appeared beside... It's like if you spelled the name Hannah... Or no, it's like if you spelled the name Anna, A-N-N-A-H. It just makes no sense at all. Uh, I, I was surprised I was with Emma. I hate Joey's sister. So I guess Emma is Joey's sister. I hate her too. Uh, there were shadows and they chased us. The only thing on them was vis... The only things on them visible were faded, glowing red eyes that were glazed and narrowed with pure evil and instinct to slaughter any breathing thing. We eventually locked ourselves in a large bedroom. It was sort of a classroom. There were about 29 desks, all pushed together, taking up three quarters of the room. Then there were bright mirrors. Those big oval-shaped ones with the sinks under them. We stopped, we stopped to look at the mirrors. I noticed that there was a huddled, angry-looking figure with wide, furious eyes hunched in the far corner. I looked over my shoulder and cheerfully said, Hello, Miss Bella to her. Wait, how are you calling her Bella if at the beginning of the fucking story you say you don't know anyone with the last name Bella or the first name Bella? So where are you conjuring up this name from if you've never met somebody with this name? Anyway, she looked underfed. Is un Oh, under <laughs> un underfed. Underfed. Uh, like a zombie. She had wild hair all over like a witch. I guess as it was light, it mostly pointed down, though. She was huddled with her knees all bunched up and her hands over the side of her head, which was tilted. Like, then she was making a sleeping action. Her eyes were pupilless. That's kind of creepy. I mean, nothing. Only white eye. They were big, too. I had no fucking idea why I was calm. She wore a tattered, dark dress. She made an angry, ear-piercing hissing noise. I looked back to the mirror. On my shoulders, she kneeled, laughing madly, her face split into a wild smile. She now had a glowing red eye, placed her palm over my eye, bright red glowing strongly on her palm. It was like her eyes, but red. Red is scary, guys. I saw the whole thing from the mirror. She started killing me, shredding me apart, ripping my flesh hungrily with her grimy teeth, screaming with joy. Oh, sorry, I got something stuck in my throat. Underfed. Okay, so she was screaming with joy. <clears throat> I woke up and burst into tears. I didn't sleep for the next night. I'm pretty fine now. I see shadows move all over, seeing things move in my perif peripheracles, jumping when someone does a sudden uh, thing. Now it's been raining on and off. The sky gets dark all of a sudden, and rain comes down hard. I'm afraid it will go through the roof and kill me. Then it stops. Then it happens again. 
and only lasts five to six minutes. Sometimes I see her. I don't like my reflection much. At least she can find... At least she can't find me during that... Okay, I'm so confused. This was, like, not that long of a story, but somehow it just completely tossed me for, like, six different twists, and I don't, I don't even know what I read. I also started choking on dust in my throat in the middle of that. So... Uh, let's find some more stories. How's everybody doing tonight, by the way? I hope everybody's having a delightful evening. His reading can be complete crap. Oh, it's no, it's the worst. It's like one of the most things that I'm known for. Wait, what? Do we have a mod problem? Do we got bad people in here? Let me just double check everything. Let me go to my. Let me go to YouTube.com, and it's gonna show me this live stream. Finding the worst creepy pastas live. Okay. I'm bad and edgy. Doing great. Trying to draw, but I got nothing done in the past half hour. Yo, I've been there. Can you read SpongeBob Fresh Start? I'll look for it. Let me just just find that S section. Let's see if let's see let's see if there's something there. A reminder that people, if you want to act like children, I'll put you in timeout like a child. God, I love having good mods like Hannah. There's so many S stories. What did you say? SpongeBob Fresh Start? Let's see if it's here. I don't think it is here. I'm going to put my headphones back on real quick. Ah! I saw so many Pingu ones. Wow. Okay. There's so many Spongebob ones. This is crazy, dude. I might have to make a video on just Spongebob ones. Something in the basement. Something. Soul Dad. Okay, wait. I want to know what Soul Dad is. Oh, God, man. These longer ones are so risky. Because, I mean, like, 99% of the time they're bad. But a lot of times they aren't even bad in, like, an interesting way. And it's just pain and suffering. Let's try this one. Someone special. I'm going to take another chug of water real quick. You guys, chug water. Like the live stream if you don't mind. Here, I'm even going to like it myself. I'm like number 41. Sipping, bro. Sipping. All right. Someone special. I bet you've been around long enough to hear pretty much every ghost story imaginable. Ranging from the frightening to the bizarre, and even the outright ridiculous. I admit, I often like to think of myself as being like that, and few stories really surprise me these days. So this person is starting off their story by shitting on other creepypastas, so this one better be good. At this point, you'll no doubt... Oh, wait, I'm, 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 I'm... Sping boob, that's an approvable... That's an approvable <laughs> fucking... At this point, you'll no doubt be expecting me to say, that was until. Well, sadly, I can't say such a thing, as honestly, I haven't got a story that I think will shock or confuse you. All I have to offer is what my friend and I will refer to as someone special. It's a game, so don't expect any skeletons in closets or ghosts or other creepy stuff. I just want to share with you guys a bit on what me and my friends do, so that you can try the game out for yourself someday. It's really quite fun. Okay, I gotta approve another Sping Boob. How's it going, Tammy? Nice to see you. I hope it's good news. Alright, uh, so they're playing this game called Someone Special, and it's really quite fun. Anyway, the game is called Someone Special. My friend came up with that name the first time we played it, and I think it fits. The goal of the game is quite simple. You go into a chat site or other social network and find a random user who is willing to talk. It can take a while, but my friend said that it is part of the game. Usually once the user gets interested, you start to talk, ask them a few questions, and eventually, if you're lucky, you will persuade that special someone to visit you. This is spooky. Yo, congrats, Tammy! That's fucking crazy! Uh, we'll have to talk after the stream. That's actually sick as fuck. 
Okay, so we got this game, someone special. Well, let's let's read this section again, because I'm stupid as balls. Alright. You go to a chat site or other social network, find a random user who is willing to talk. It can take a while, but my friend says that it's part of the game. Usually the user who gets interested, you start to talk, ask them a few questions. Eventually, if you're lucky, you'll persuade that special someone to visit you IRL. This is when the fun really starts. It doesn't happen often, and to be honest with you, you may have more luck trying to talk to someone at a park or a cafe or even in the street. That is definitely easier than the way me and my friend play, but be careful of crowds. Special Someone is a game for three people at most. Where was I? Oh yeah. Oh, they were actually asking themselves. Where was I? Oh yeah. The next part of the game requires a bit of waiting as you bring the Special Someone home with you. And if you don't feel like taking them home, you can go to a motel or a quiet place, away from the crowds. My friend notes that some people will get concerned at this point. Reassure the special someone that they are fine. If they struggle too much, let them go. You can always find a new someone special, and it's not worth ruining the game. If you're lucky, someone special will follow you, which is when the game comes to its final stage. That's what my friend likes to call sudden death. Of course, death doesn't have to be sudden at all. In fact, me and my friend often have a contest to see which of us can make the someone special pass out before waking them up again just to do it over and over again. However, no matter how long it takes, the rule of the game is clear. Special someone must die. Now, I bet you're thinking right now, what the fuck am I reading? Am I some sort of sick freak who goes around killing people and writing about it as if it was a game? Of course not. I'm just telling you what me and my friend do. If you think that is wrong, I guess you must be the one who has problems. I better go now. My friend is calling me. He does that sometimes, even when I'm asleep. He gets pretty angry if I don't respond. So I can't really stay too long. Maybe I can ask my friend if he knows any other games that we can play and pass them on. Until then, I hope you really have fun. Hey, tell you what would be fun. How about you guys send us some stories about someone special and how it worked for you? My friend would love that. I bet he could teach you guys about a lot of stuff as well. Oh, I better go. My friend's getting a little impatient. Laters. Laters. That's so like 2010s speak. Oh, God. I don't know. I liked this one. I wanted to like it. I wish that there was just like a little bit more detail instead of like the end objective of the game just being to like drag the special someone out to a secluded area and kill them i mean i know they're like torturing them as well by making them pass out and then waking them up again just doing that over and over again but i don't know it, like it had potential i think it had some potential i remember this episode i don't remember this episode of spongebob don't you mean sping boob okay uh bum 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 let me just double check everything here, because I don't want to be weird. Too late, I already am weird. I'm a weirdo. Yo, it's nice to see you too, Internet Cowboy. Oh, oh gay romance is definitely very popular in Creepypasta. Because it's another twist that they can throw at you. I feel like that's the only reason. I mean, there's probably a lot of, like, LGBT people writing Creepypastas, but I feel like... Often, it's just they want to have another twist to throw in there. I need to blow my nose. I should mute my microphone. Does this mute me? Yeah, let me see. Ha -da -ha. <sighs> I just dropped my phone. All right, uh... Wait, that's really long. Why are these stories so long? There's probably snot on my face. All right, let's try something in the basement real quick. Something in the basement. All right. Why? Why did it have to end like this? It all started a normal summer day. Okay, anyway. Why? Why did it have to end like this? It all started a normal summer day. I was laying in bed one afternoon when I heard the door open downstairs. I figured it was my sister, so I ignored it. Then it dawned on me that she was away on vacation. 
I jumped out of bed, grabbed my shotgun, and ran downstairs. I saw a tall, thin man in a suit looking through my stuff. Hey! I yelled at him. He turned around to reveal he had no face! I was gonna make a joke about him having no face, but then you can't even make a joke about these creepypastas because they're so fucking predictable. He ran at me and knocked me against a wall, leaving me unconscious. I awoke in a dark basement, my basement, with him standing before me. He then started to talk to me telepathically. He told me that he would keep me in here as a guinea pig, and if I survived the week, he would leave and never bother me again. Naturally, I agreed. Otherwise, he'd kill me. Day 1. Today he brought a little boy into the room. He told me to kill him or I'd die. God, the edginess, bro. I'm literally getting, like deep lacerations from the edge on these stories i strangled him but then i got this weird urge to mutilate him i took a shovel and bashed his skull and cut him with a rake it was fun in a strange way nice good for you bro day two same as yesterday but this time i killed her with a saw day three nothing happened today for some reason i can't speak anymore day four killed another kid i'm starting to like this day five i can no longer hear anything either that or there's just no sound Day six, killed another kid. Ha 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 ha, I'm going insane. Day seven, something's happening. I can't feel anything on my face. It's as if it just disappeared. What's going on? I have an urge to kill children. My body, it's stressing. I'm so skinny. Dear God, I'm so skinny. Help me, it hurts. The transformation is complete. Begin reawakening. I woke up to the sight of many other slender men. I now know that I have become one of them. Must kidnap. Must kill. Like the Slenderman scar pump. Like the Slenderman scrapey pasta is already so like bad and cliched, and somehow they just found a way to make it worse. Tammy, me too, bro. Can you read the next story in a Joe Swanson voice? Let's see if I can find a short one to do. Okay, here we go. SpongeBob stolen secrets. We all know that Spongebob... Wait, fuck, shit. <laughs> we all know that Spongebob... Fuck, it's not that Spongebob. Okay, fuck. Here we go. Spongebob stolen secrets. We all know Spongebob. That's a fact. Now check this out. One day at the Krusty Krab, a man comes. <laughs> a man comes. God damn it! These stories, they just fucking write their own jokes. One day at the Krusty Krab, a man comes and says Squidward was hint by Spongebob's new car. Spongebob. Why can't I do a good Joe Swanson right now? This is so bad. Hey, Spongebob. Oh, wait, no. Spongebob knew he should have not drone a car, so we sent out for revenge. We went to Squid's house, found his diary, and in it, he found out the old squid duns have a thing for Sandy. Spongebob wanted Sandy all to himself. We set out for a vengeance. That night at the hospital, we grabbed a knife and stabbed Squidward ten times. The next day, it turned out he survived and fled the hospital to try and Spongebob... What the fuck? Okay, I need to stop the Joe Swanson voice for a second. The next day, it turned out that he survived and fled the hospital, Spongebob tries to get Patrick in to chance him, but Star said no. He then tries to kill Star. That's the night Sponge fled to the city waiting for revenge. Okay, I gotta read this whole thing again in a regular voice just so we can comprehend how unintelligible this shit is. Spongebob's stolen secrets. We all know Spongebob, that's a fact. Now check this out. Good start. One day at the Krusty Krab, a man comes and says Squidward was hint by Spongebob's new car. Spongebob knew he should not have drone a car, so we sent out for revenge. We went to Squid's house, found his diary, and in it found out that the old Squid duns have a thing for Sandy. Spongebob wanted Sandy all to himself. We set out for revenge. That night at the hospital, we grabbed a knife and stabbed Squidward ten times. 
The next day, it turned out he survived and fled the hospital. SpongeBob tries to get Patrick in to chance him, but Star said no. He then tries to kill Star. That night, the sponge fled the city waiting for revenge. I am lost and confused and burdened by this information. Simply make me a moderator. I actually should do that. You're a good moderator. A man comes. Oh, there's a managing mod. I'm not going to make you the managing moderator. Wait, why isn't IDK a moderator? IDK, did you not want to be a moderator? Because that's the only reason I wouldn't have you as one. But anyway, that was SpongeBob Stolen Secrets. Like, literally, what the fuck? Don't read Little Miss Rarity. Okay, I won't. Um, that sounds creepy and uncool. I don't like Little Miss anything. That just gives me crappy vibes. Okay, someone special. That was probably one of the best ones of the night, which is really sad. Uh, let's, let's, uh... Smiley Town. Smiley the Smiler. Oh, fuck my balls. Don't do that. Oh, God. This is like a chat log. Oh, my God. This is so long. Damn it. I really wanted to read Smiley Town. I wanted to read Smiley, too, but these are like hella long, and I will, like, die by the end of them. All right. Let's go with Smiley the Smiler. I was mod on like one of your different YouTube channels. Okay, you're a, you're a moderator now, because you're good and responsible. And then SpongeBob tried to kill Patrick. Mother of God, what a bad. We read this. Smiley the Smiler. I hate myself. I don't remember anything. Yeah, it is okay. So it's a very, it's a very like touchy watchy. Um. Or it's a very appealing title. Guys, I can't think. I can't speak. If you really want to read... I, I'm scared of Wattpad, to be honest. She was beautiful. She is there. She is not. She's watching me. She goth. Alright, we got a bunch of... Okay, she is there. I like when... I like when they're there. Alright, let's get it. Oh, that feels so good. I just inhaled all of the snot into my body. I love it. She is there. When I was younger, I had nightmares of this old lady. She has always seemed menacing, even when she acted kind. It was always the same formula. Fall her for kindness, get chased. She usually acted nice until she went in the kitchen to get cookies. Why does a fucking shirt look stupid? She was very typical looking for an evil grandmother. Long fingernails, bloodshot eyes, gray hair, black dress with a white collar. She's sounding kind of hot now, dude. Anybody that... I'm sorry. Anybody that wears a black dress with a white collar... Automatically a freaking bad bitch. A bonnet? Oh, and a bonnet, too? I love a good bonnet. And she had a very ominous voice. One night, she could swear she was watching me with those calculating eyes. One day I told a parent, and it got worse. She started to become more aggressive. She usually scratched me. One day I found scratch marks on my wrist, and then I started getting the dreams in daytime. My mom made me go to multiple psychiatrists. As I went to each one, my nightmares became more and more vivid, to the point where I obtained insomnia. Yet it still found a way, and the fucking dream still got to me. I was on the verge of insanity. My mentality got worse, and I started to see her almost everywhere I went. This is my last summary before I end this all. Goodbye, family. Okay, this story sucked. Massive ween, dude. This one's too long. She's watching me. Smiley the Smiler. I miss you, dude. Burp guy will be furious. I know, that guy, like, I, 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 I pray on his rage. found a friend's plagiarized writing on Wattpad. It's the only experience I have with it. 
All right, she's watching me. It all started a few years ago when I became an EMT and started working for one of the local ambulance systems. Everything was great. I made good friends, loved my job, and then we got the call. It came out as a standard nine echo. We all know what that is. That's a dead body. Transfer the meat locker. Total eye roll. I actually hurt my eyes doing that eye roll. Uh... Ah, the joys of working for a private ambulance service. Or that's what we thought. We never visually ID the bodies on pickup. Instead, we let the nurses... I gotta turn down my phone, I'm getting notifications. Instead, we let the nurses at the hospital load a black bagged body into the rig. And then <laughs> drive away. I don't know why I said bagged instead of bagged. So we pull up to the morgue out of the res. The stiff was Native American. Why you gotta be so mean to this dead body? And then the security guy opens the gate. We watched as what happened to be, what appeared to be an old lady walked through the open gate and she waved at us as she went. That's odd, we thought, that there would be anyone like that here, especially at this time of night. But whatever, we thought, and pulled to up the doors. The attendant came out, greeted us, and we hung around to bullshit for a few minutes. Pull the body out, roll the gurney over to the fridge, yada yada. Yawn. And then he unzips the bag to check the ID tags. It was the little old lady. So my partner and I geek out about it once we're on our way, laughing nervously. We thought this was the end of it. Oh no, not even close. So my partner and I geek out about it once we're on our way, laughing nervously. We thought that this was the end of it. Oh no, not even close. Every time I've had to work a code since, the little old lady is there, watching me, judging me, standing silently by. I don't know why. I can't figure it out. It's not like I killed her, or fucked up and let her die. I wasn't even in the vicinity, and it just scares the shit out of me. Nobody else noticed her except my partner, he sees her too. All right, I, don't, I don't fucking know. I'm too stupid to, like, get the deeper meanings from these stories. She was beautiful. Okay, maybe these two stories are connected in some way. They say I killed her, but I didn't. I loved her. I loved her so much. She was beautiful. The police are lying. I didn't kill her. She just, just fell off that building. They say I pushed her, but I didn't. It was the other guy. So she didn't fall. She was pushed. Uh, anyway, <laughs> he always was jealous of my success. Every day he chastised me, yelled at me, but I resisted. I stopped him. At least, I did not until yesterday. They say they're going to take me to the asylum. I really don't need it. I'm fine on my own. I've got company. The other guy's actually a bit sociable now. I play games with him all the time. They say I attacked a fellow patient. I didn't, though. There's no way. It was the other guy. Now they say I tried to end my life. I didn't, though. It was the other guy. Oh my god, this person's hallucinating another person, but it's actually him doing everything. Fight Club. That was bad. Okay, the she-goth story is way too long. Alright, Spongebob episode zero. We did wait. Hugh, last stream? What the fuck? Guys, I'm so bad at my job. Why am I so terrible at this? I'm so bad at my life. Oh, God, dude. I've read every creepypasta. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I need to, like... What? I need to go to therapy for, like, memory fixing. Because I am just... I'm losing it. <laughs> Someday... <laughs> my, my YouTube channel is just gonna turn into me... Like, reading the same exact r slash nice guy story just ten times a week. Anyway, we've got Spongebob episode zero. No! The water doesn't make me forget. It's the only thing keeping me okay. To be fair, I feel like 80% of the creepypastas feel exactly the same. You've read every creepypasta? Q, that makes you the king of creepypasta. The stream is slow. I like it. Yeah, I'm a slow boy. They call me Big Slow. All right, here we go. SpongeBob Episode Zero. 
Now, I'm not going to start off this creepypasta by claiming I saw it air on TV or bought it from some sketchy store clerk, because let's admit it, we all know that's complete utter bullshit. But in all serious, let's get on to the episode. Everywhere at the end of Q-Star. So, it was about a week ago when I was having a garage sale and I needed some money, so I went in my basement digging through storage. It was boring, and I didn't really find anything other than a couple old movies and some toys from when I was a kid. But something caught my attention. One of my movies was a little heavy, like there was more than one disc in there. So I popped open the case, and surely enough, there were four discs crammed in there. The first two were the Lion King movies. The next was a Finding Nemo f special features disc, and then there was a DVD that was blank and simply said Spongebob Episode Zero. So, <laughs> fucking, you're like calling out these other stories for like, oh, it's so ridiculous that people say, I saw this air on TV or I bought it at a store. But somehow you finding a disc in your house is more plausible? Like, you're not, you're not any better than these other creepypasta writers. So, Spongebob Episode Zero. Now, I have my fair share in liking Spongebob, but I never remember an Episode Zero. So, I did what anyone else would do and popped it into my DVD player. The title screen was plain. I pressed on the episode and it started immediately. The title card said Episode Zero. It was weird because it was a very dark-themed title and it was silent. The episode started with Spongebob sitting in the diner and he looked very sad. He didn't make any noise, and the audio was silent. Then it cut to a mangled corpse of Sandy, and it cut back to Spongebob sitting on his bed, and the audio was now on. You could hear a very bind-chilling crying, as if someone knew they were about to die. <laughs> Sping, bing. <laughs> Why is saying Spongebob's name in a different way just so fucking funny every time? But Spingbang didn't move. He just sat there, and the crying got louder. It then cut to Patrick crying in front of Spongebob house. It only lasted for about three seconds. Oddly enough, it then shows Patrick, Squidward, Mr. Krabs, and surprisingly Sandy sitting in front of a gravestone. They all look very sad, and you could hear blood-curdling screams coming from the audio. Then we approach the final scene, and it cuts to show Spongebob and Patrick standing side by side. Their eyes were black and expanded, and the only two colors in the picture is red and black. Oh my god, guys, those are the scariest two colors! A demonic voice then said, Smiling is the mask of the suffering! It then cuts to black, and you see the bikini bottom explode. Then the episode ends, and the credits are quick and silent. I was quite horrified by this. I didn't know what to think. I then turned around and saw that my brother had saw it all, and so did his friend Alex. I didn't know what to tell them. My brother is traumatized to this day, and his friend has since went missing. I didn't want to say anything to the police because I didn't want to be next. Hence why I shared it with you guys. I'm begging you, in all honesty, if you ever see a copy of this episode, don't watch it. It'll give you bad psychological effects beautiful stuff simply ravishing spage bang not the deviant art oc oh this is scary sounds in the background oh, i wanted to show you guys something this is a q2 video and it fits the theme of uh i'm pretty sure some of you have to have seen this Uh, let's put it over here. Can you guys see this? Is this showing up on the stream? Oh god, it's like... Okay, fuck balls, dicks, wieners. Alright, one sec. Let me just... I gotta, I gotta engineer some things here real quick. Uh... I'm literally sitting... Oh god, it's like fucking completely negative. Alright, one sec. I just gotta get rid of this filter for a second. Filters, edit filters... This is, I made this. Let's all watch this thing that I made together because I'm unwell. Oh my god, it's...
It's way too quiet. Oh wait, no, it's not. No, that was way too loud! Fuck! Okay, I'm gonna restart it real quick. Just one second, guys. I fucking hate myself. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Everybody's leaving the stream right now. Um, so yeah. Anyway, let's get rid of that. So that was silly. I made that. It was like, originally... It was just me doing like a cover... Of the Family Guy theme song, but it's all Peter just doing the nya sound. So it's like nya 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 But like then it like I I I like pitch shifted it and made it so that it sounded like creepier. Um and so yeah, that's what I did. Cause I had like oh guys, I don't wanna spoil this. But it's probably never going to happen because I'm terrible at actually doing things. But, uh, like, I wanted to write a Family Guy creepypasta. And I wanted it to include, like, sound effects from the show. So, like, characters' voices and stuff. So I was going to do this whole giant production of, like, this Family Guy creepypasta. But, like, you know, you got to do things, like, for your job and that, like, make you money and stuff. And I know that I would just put, like, dozens of hours into this thing that, like... It's a creepypasta, like, you can't, you know, I don't know. You guys know what I'm saying. You guys are like, we do not know what you're saying. Opening up some new creepypastas. No, I could not, I could not have you guys alongside me for my writing process. I actually had a good concept, but... Uh, you know, like many creepypastas, I had all these branches of things that could happen, but... Keep an eye out for it. It may still happen. Oh no, this story starts in Ohio. Scary. It's way too long though. Oh god. <laughs> Guys, you have to let me know if I've already read these stories. Okay, this one's called Please. Like what I do to your mother. Oh! Okay, here we go. The deep sounds of the woods creeped me out. I had no watch or clock in my room to say what time it was. It was probably way too early for me to be complaining to my mother. That night, it was dark time for me. Because at the time, I was only ten years old. True. Ten years old is a very dark time. I had no television or anything amusing me to keep me away from stress or boredom. After about fifteen minutes, I couldn't hold it. I slowly opened the door and walked down the highway. The hallway, not the frickin' highway, I'm so dumb. Everything was silent, not even the fridge in the kitchen was making noise. I opened the bathroom door and left it open. There, I turned on the light switch and started to piss. <laughs> I don't know why the word piss just made me laugh there, but piss is funny. H. Fester, thank you for the 199. We do, we need a fucking Family Guy analog horror. If I had the skill, I would create it. Um, so this person's pissing. All I did was nothing. No sound, no interruptions. I didn't even make one bit of noise until I reached the point where I was washing my hands and looking at myself in the bathroom mirror. Nothing was there. I couldn't see myself or the bathroom. Just a reflection of a picture posted by my brother, who left five years ago. I didn't realize it, so I just went back into the hallway and started walking to my room. There, I saw my mother calling for me. I heard the sounds of begging. Nothing was making sense. Was it the sounds of the woods? Was it ghosts? All I did was follow my mother and she hugged me. Get out of the house, she said immediately. There I saw a dark shadow behind her. Everything was black. Everything. Hurry, she yelled. 
As I ran, she followed me to the front yard and called the police. In about three minutes, they arrived. The case they saw was nothing. Nothing to be found. I swore. I saw something. I swore I saw something before I left. It was the shadows again. It was begging, but I couldn't quite tell what it was saying. The only thing I understood was the word, please. Okay, that was fucking terrible. Literally, I was just about to say a horrible thing to this creepypasta author, but I'm better than that. Uh, yo, H. Fester, thank you for the 199. Wait, why did that show up so late in the fucking... In, in my notification thing here. Anyway. But thank you once again. We do want... We do want a Family Guy analog whore. Sounded like I said Family Guy analog whore. Which I would also... Be open to. I, I really... I, I need to see if there's another Family Guy story that I haven't read yet. I'm sorry, guys. Because I'm obsessed. Oh, see? I don't know why, but... For some reason it, like, un... It un high like like these blue links become unpurpled, even though I've already watched them or read them. <sighs> yeah, I've probably read all of these because I remember there being a feeling. Okay, let's please let's read this one that says please read. Wait, you do Tammy? That's crazy. Cookies got cleared. Penis got steered. Girls got feared. And I got weird. So disappointing. Can it have gay romance in it? Of course. Tammy giving me ice cream. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Bars. All right, please read. Don't stop reading. Just continue as you were doing before. It's important that you remain undetected. We're here to help you. We've been given orders to uh, monitor to your online activity for more than a month. As of right now, you're being watched by at least 12 separate surveillance devices. Please continue reading this. Don't make any adjustments to your mood or expression. <laughs> I'm angry now. I'm, I'm disobeying the story is the joke. Remain calm. Under the guise of an online article, we are now feeding information to you that can save your life, if you choose to cooperate. The target is currently a few feet away from you. Stay focused. It's been studying you much longer than we've been. It knows how you behave. Even the slightest change in your behavior could put it on high alert. We're on our way. But in case we don't make it... I suggest you use what little time you have left wisely. I, yeah, I was going to say, I've totally read this one before. Fuck, dude. Oh my god, I need to keep my cookies intact. Oh, Maybe I need to make like a master list of creepypastas that I've read. Have we read New Acquaintanceship? I hate myself, you guys. I'm a worst YouTuber. I'm worse than... I'm worse than Tobuscus in 2023. Watched by 12. You mean 100 plus. Oh god, you guys are the surveillance! Shit. We've already read freaking New Acquaintanceship? Oh my god, I th yeah, I think I remember Tracy. Oh, it's like my brain is attracted to the same titles as before. Google question mark? Okay, I'm pretty sure I haven't read anything with Google in the title. Graphic C. Fashion Victim. Farmville the Addiction. Fatty the Mower. Oh, this one's kind of long. Farmville the Addiction. Let's let's read this one. Piss monster. We've seen your search history, q q q -thy. We are coming. One Direction Creepypasta. <laughs> Fairly Odd Parents could be funny as well. Let's let's check out this uh, Farmville The Addiction. I don't even know if, like, the younger people out there in the audience will know what Farmville is. It was very hot for a time there. 
It was like the proto-mobile game. Farmville The Addiction. A slash N. This was written by my sister, not by me. She doesn't have Wattpad, so I posted it for her. Warning, mentions of sewer slide. Alright, let's see if we can survive it. It starts with a few minutes here and there, checking on it once or twice a day. You can send a few requests to your friends here or there. It soon grew to more. Minute by minute, hour by hour, it slowly became an addiction. You started naming your plants, singing to them to make them grow faster. You start to pull away from your friends and family. They send you to therapy for the first time. You meet some people that are similar to you, but your case is more desperate. As soon as you get out, you go right back to Farmville. You're completely... <laughs> Love the fucking... I, I just love the idea of Farmville being a villain in a creepypasta. You completely cut off from your friends and family. You become reclusive. You don't answer any calls. You stop paying your bills and live off bottled water and a generator in your bed. That doesn't sound that bad. That gives off only enough power to charge your laptop. You let yourself go. You start planting things every second so there's always something to do. You quit your job. You begin worshipping your laptop as your life. The thing that brings you Farmville. You soon meet a group. They call themselves the Farmers. <laughs> they become your new friends and only social contact. You sit for hours at the local library playing Farmville. That's like more socialization than I get normally though. So this person's actually doing better than me. You already lost your house but you don't care. One of the Farmers died today. He forgot to eat because he was too consumed in Farmville. He forgot the food that he created could not sustain his physical form, even though it fed his soul. You are at his funeral. You decide to try going without Farmville, but within ten minutes, you are shaking and trembling with withdrawal. You end up curled up in the corner playing Farmville. You decide to get a job at Facebook so you can afford Farmville expansions and the little food you need to sustain life. You remain at the library 24-7 every single day, living off the vending snacks machines. Is, are, are there even 24-7 libraries? You end up curled in the corner playing Farmville. Then it stops. A huge lawsuit to Facebook for addictive behavior and death causes a Farmville shutdown. You try the spin-off games, but you get nowhere near the same high. Nothing can compare to your beloved Farmville. You can't live without it. You pull out a gun and press it against your forehead. I'll see you on the other side, Farmville, you whisper. Then you pull the trigger. Honestly, kind of fair. Kind of reasonable. I need to fill up my water. I'll be right back. I was gonna shake my ass, I was gonna twerk for you guys, but I actually don't know how. Also, that would be inappropriate. Oh, I just realized I'm not wearing socks. Fuck! I'm home, cheers. Yeah, no, nobody look at my feet. If you looked at my feet, uh, you will die in seven days. The Jiggy Peppers? That sounds kind of hot. No socks and a twerk. Wee you, I look just like Buddy Holly. Oh, oh, and you're Mary Tyler Moore. Q Star OnlyFans today. Graphic C. This is one of very few creepypastas that are actually true. Except it was a dream. So it's not true. It's short, so please don't troll and say, Oh, this sucks and is too short. Because it really happened. It all started last night when I was reading some creepypastas and watching some Tales doll videos on YouTube. Have we fucking read this one already? It sounds so familiar. It's, I've definitely read this. I decided to play some Sonic Generations 
soon after and played the bonus stages you unlock once you beat the first two acts. I unlocked a song from Sonic R called Super Sonic Racing. The song was supposed to be a remix of the original, but instead the original played, so I became freaked out a bit since it wasn't the right song. I got hiccups and burpees, guys. I'm struggling. No. I turned on my Xbox off and went to sleep. In my dreams, it seemed as if I was awake like any other normal day. In the dream, I was on top of the computer looking at pictures on Google Images, and I typed in the words Graphic C, and a huge picture of Tails doll popped up with him on top of Sonic in the form of a ball with his mouth on top of Sonic, eating him alive. The background was Green Hill Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog, or Sonic 2's Emerald Hill Zone. Then the song, Can You Feel the Sunshine, played in my dream. Tails doll then jumped out of my computer screen and woke me up. This was the scariest shit I've ever dreamed of. I'll never think of Sonic games the same again. P.S. If I have any more dreams of Tails doll in them, or if I actually see him in the game, or a red light in the dark, I'll be sure to update. Q and I burped at the same time. Oh my god, we're soulmates. Burp buddies! That was bad. I mean, like... Dreams, like, I like dreams, I like talking about my dreams, but the reality of it is that uh, dreams aren't really scary, because it's like, it's, when you tell me about your dream, it's like, okay, but you woke up at the end and nothing actually happened. At least in the creepypasta sense. They're having gay romance. Aren't you supposed to say jinx? Oh yeah, Jinx, you owe me a Coke, LOL. Fashion victim. In the summer of 2012, the fashion world was taken by storm when the young designer named Levon Caligar surprised everyone with a stunning display of what's been called the most exotic, bizarre, and breathtaking style of clothes and accessories for the season. This young Armenian's designs... Designers rise to popularity was shrouded in controversy, however. One of the main reasons was how picky he was with his models. He would interview each of them on private, and then would turn each and every one of them down for reasons unspecified. The weird thing is, all of those models he rejected were never seen again, probably leaving the fashion industry after failing to meet the standards. Or so he claimed. Yo, the Sheeper, 87, thank you for the two bucks. They have M&M creepypastas. That's how M&M talks. That's an awfully hot coffee pot. Eventually, he found his perfect pairing with Russian model Nastia Lyudid, whom he said he had chosen because of her perfect skin. A skin so beautiful it makes other skins look great. He's going to wear her skin. I'm just going to predict it right now. They both stole the show during the European Fashion Week when Levon's leather-bound garnets and Lidoid's feral movements left everyone with their mouths open wide. In the words of fashion critic Jean Seistout, are any of these fucking people real? Or is this person just making up annoying to pronounce names? His creations look so natural and alive. They looked like a pot of the body instead of clothes. When prompted to receive their award, however, the couple was nowhere to be found. Terror struck the national community when the bodies of dozens of missing bodies, models were found skinless, buried deep on a plot of land owned by Mr. Caligar. In the spring of 2012, the police department and federal government of Armenia were at a hunt for an infamous serial killer who was known to operate for years. According to the chief police officer, his modus operandi, wouldn't they just say MO, consists of kidnapping young women, which he tortures psychologically for as long as they can stand, and when they can't anymore, he mercilessly tears apart their skin, which based on the evidence found on the crime scene, he used to sew previous various pieces of clothes and light and the like if our sources are to be believed he used the money to escape and get a new life he adds we fear where he may be or even worse what he may be doing 
as the fall of the same year, the serial killer Lavon Caligar has not been found. But according to testimonies extracted from his accomplice Nastia Ludiad, he is preparing for his winter collection. We'll keep you posted as information arises. <laughs> That was, uh, that was kind of, I don't know, it's like an original thing. Most creepypastas are not talking about fashion, the fashion world. I liked the framing of it. Like, I really don't care about a bunch of models getting their skin taken off. Like, I would in real life, but in the creepypasta sense, it's not, like, scary to me. But I do like how they kind of talk about it almost like it's a news story that's happening. Like, this is something that's, like, in the public eye and is currently unfolding. Um, so that is interesting to me. Oh my god, guys, I need to make urine now. Oh my god, we got Eevee in this story. We got Eevee talking to other Pokemans. Google? Question mark? Oh yeah, Eminem, let's, let's see if we can find an Eminem creepypasta. I don't even know what it would be. Eminem, the return. Okay, we got two different Eminem stories here. Okay, it's not super long. Let's see if this one's a little bit... No, this one's super long. Okay, so we're going to do this one. Eminem, the return. Chat, set a timer for 25 minutes. Why? Q, can you write... I will write you a new creepypasta. Give me 10 minutes. It will be so good and scary. Lie. I actually would believe in you. Wait, why are we sitting in chapter for ten a uh, timer for ten minutes? I need to piss so bad. I'll be right back, guys. I'm sorry. Hello. Hey. Hello. Don't waste your time on me. You're already the voice inside my head. All right. Let's read Eminem The Return. Yo, bro to myth. Thank you for the $10 and that cute ass freaking spinny chair guy. That's cute as hell. Thank you for the generous donation. That's crazy town. Greetings. All right, Eminem, The Return, The Beginning. Six years ago, I was browsing through the store and found an album of Eminem, but it was called E-Mine. I listened to it and I was terrified, and I destroyed the CD so I could be safe, but something happened that I will never forget. Even if I try to forget, it just comes back up. So here's my story. I was relaxing at my house watching TV, and... I had for a new M and M and fuck, dude! I want to die! I hate myself. Okay, 
I was relaxing in my house watching Eminem, and an ad for, it's supposed to be AD, this is not addition, this is not multiplication, this is not subtraction, this is an advertisement, for a new Eminem album came up, it was called The Revival. I liked Eminem and was happy, but another part of my mind doesn't. So I just got up and went outside to my car and drove to the nearest music shop. When I got there, I checked the rap aisle and looked for the new album, but to my surprise, I found it. I was happy, but then my heart felt like it stopped. When I looked next to the album, it was E Mine, but it was different. The cover looked very ruffled, and the logo was newer. I couldn't believe it. I wanted to run out of the store, but my sense of curiosity got a hold of me, and I bought it. And I also bought the new album. I went up to the cashier and said, I would like to buy these two albums. The cashier looked at the E-Mine album and screamed. <laughs> Fucking screaming at the sight of a freaking bootleg Eminem album. I was calm, caught off guard, but I calmed down and said, Is there something wrong? He looked at me and calmed down as well and said, stuttering, d d d That'll be... 620 how are you buying two albums for six dollars and 20 cents like if this was six years ago and this story probably came out in like 2012 or some shit in 2006 you're not getting two albums for 620 unless they're like used and one of these is clearly new there's no truth in this art anyway i got my cash out and paid him when i got back to my house i looked at the cover some more it was the black background and was printed on too. The logo looked like it was spray painted and the letters were slightly slanted and seemed to look like it was glitching. The M was clearly visible, but it was so screwed up that it looked like it was crumbling apart and there were some scratches on the M, like it was as if it was stabbed through. This was detailed to look like it was breaking and crumbling apart. I checked on the back to see any songs. There was none. I texted my friends to show them this, and they texted back. That looks very weird. Why did Eminem make that cover? I asked the same question, too. Eminem, like, like him or hate him, he's one of the weirdest fucking rappers on the planet, especially in his early career. Like, making a slightly weird-looking album cover is, like, not out of the fucking realm of possibility at all. Alright. Uh, wait, my fucking headset just died. Nice. Okay, anyway. Um, this was detailed to look, okay, fuck. He responded, it could be a prank or something. Could be a prank, who knows? I checked inside the album. The black, the back of the front cover was all white, just like Eminem, lol, because it was printed on. The CD, on the other hand, was colored blue. No other details. Well, now or never. I got onto my computer and put in the CD. There were seven songs. There was a first track called Come Back. The song started off with static for a minute with cracks and pops here and there. Then it played the middle part of Stan, and it just ended with Eminem saying hello. Hello, I'm Eminem. I can't do a good Eminem impression. This, that was confusing. The second track was called 3001. It started with Eminem saying something about the moon. Then someone yells at him for taking his girlfriend. Then they both start, start fighting and punching was heard while hearing laughing in the background. I was kind of laughing, then someone yells, STOP IT! And it ends with a beep. Huh. The third track was called Never, and it was just two people talking about a news report about a fire that happened in the forest. This lasted forever until the next song played. The fourth track was called fucking semicolon parenthesis dot parenthesis ten. It just made me scared. It started with a frantic person screaming in agony, then to Eminem laughing for a minute, then Eminem just blurted out, RUN! I'M Eminem! Then a scream was heard. It was like a combination of a parakeet screaming and a low growl of a bear and a guy choking. I was scared because of this. To make it even more scary, I heard something fall behind me. I was too scared to move. After a few minutes, I was cooled enough to listen to the fifth track. It was called My Name Is Backwards, which is My Name Is Backwards. It started with the beginning of My Name Is, but after Eminem says, Hi, kids! It just repeats, My Name Is Backwards, sounding like Eminem saying his rap name for three minutes straight. Uh, the sixth track was called Blank Underscore Test. 
It was Eminem saying everything quietly for two minutes, and then says tests, and it was silent for a minute, then drums just played out for the rest of the song. The seventh song was not a good thing to do. It started with Eminem saying, There's no time left, man. Turn off the music. He then repeated this a few more times, then heard some more growling, then a roar. Eminem screamed, Get away from me, you monster! I don't know why Eminem is now an anime character with American dubs. The same scream was heard on the fourth track, but then a woman screamed, GET OUT! Then there was a slicing sound. My arms stung and I screamed, and then Eminem said, Turn off the music, she'll hurt you more. Then slicing was heard and there was pain all over my body. I turned off my laptop, but before it was turning off, I heard Eminem saying, Thank you. I didn't know what that was, but I took the disc out and broke it in half and threw it out my window into a lake. My house is near a lake, by the way, so the disc must have floated off somewhere. A few months later, I received a letter in the mail saying the disc you bought was not made by Eminem, and someone who worked for Eminem was fired and made the album. But the bigger question is, how did Eminem talk to me? What a fucking story. Jesus, balls. I live on a lake, by the way. <laughs> I know, it's like, we, 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 we observed that you live by a lake, because when you threw your thing out the window, it went into a lake. Um, wait, really? Are you gonna DM it to me on, on Discord? I will not hold anything back, by the way. Just so you know. I will ruin you. Oh shit, dude. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's in red and black! Those are the scary colors! Okay, let me copy image. And uh, let me just add an image on the screen here. Let me make sure to not put a picture of my boobs on the screen, because that would be scary. Wait, add a new source instead. Yes, please. This is going to be called Story. The scary colors. Oh, wait, what am I doing wrong? I'm doing something wrong. Save image. Save file as image. Okay, there we go. Alright, here we go, guys. This is scary. Okay. Once there was a streamer named Q Star who liked to make fun of creepy pastas. What he didn't know is that the more he read them, the more powerful they got. Even now as he reads them, all the pastas are slowly gaining power. Watching. Waiting. Waiting for the stream to end. Waiting for the camera to turn off. And he doesn't know. Waiting just behind the door of his room are horrible, terrifying creatures. Creatures he's made fun of. Covered in their hyper-realistic blood, with their hyper-realistic eyes, and they're also in red and black, and I found them at the garage sale. Watch out, Qbert Star, the Q that belongs to you. Spanch boob is coming for you. Oh my god, this is terrifying. Actually, this image didn't even come... Wait, what? This image didn't even come from Aaron, it just appeared on my desktop. Wait, let me put this on the screen. Like... Wait, what the fuck? I didn't even save this. It's not even showing... It's... it's it changed my desktop background? What the fuck is going on? Wait, let me see if I can save this image that my desktop just got changed to. It's not saving. It's like this image doesn't exist. Aaron, my computer has been hacked. Oh my god. What are we gonna do? I'm scared, you guys. And now I can't end the stream. Because the creepypasta characters are going to come for me. Oh, guys. It's so scary. No, there's no boobs, guys. I could actually... You know what's crazy? 
I could actually just whip out my breasts right now, and there's nothing anybody could do about it. I'm not gonna do it, but I could. And that's society, you know? That's the real creepypasta. Why'd you have to send the hacker files to my computer? I should have never trust a game dev to send me files and have them not be Trojan horsed with creepypasta characters. How much for a boob reveal? I don't know. The real creepypasta is the friends we made along the way. Okay, I think that's gonna wrap up this creepypasta stream. It's been delightful. Uh, I will try, I'm gonna try harder next time to find some fresh stories for you guys. Uh, but yeah, it's been delightful. I like you a lot. I'll see you super soon. Peace out, Cub Scouts. And yeah, later. I'm so sorry, Frogfish. I love you, but bye. Skate on, drink water, or else bad things will freaking happen to you. And I'll 